Have you ever wondered how to maintain that intimate relationship with the Lord? It's interesting how so many things can get in the way of that sweet relationship, that closeness that we sense and feel sometimes. And of course, all of our relationships with the Lord is not based on feelings, but it certainly is wonderful to sense his presence and to feel his presence at times. The thing that we always got to remember, it's the word of God that we put our trust and faith in. Sometimes we may not feel his presence or sense his closeness, but the reality is we can always fall back on the word of God that tells us, as Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you even to the end of the age. But getting back to the idea of maintaining that intimacy, what can we do? Well, the Apostle John takes uh, liberty at revealing that to us in his first epistle, 1 John. That's what the whole epistle, I believe, is about, is that of fellowship with the Lord, intimacy, friendship, and how to maintain it. See, the problem is, again, things get in the way, right? Sin, when we screw up, when we, when we fail, that gets in the way. Because our, what happens, our conscience gets guilty. We begin thinking, well, less highly of ourselves. And it's okay to, to keep ourselves in balance, as Paul said it in another place, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But we also don't want to be under the burden of guilt and allow the enemy to come in and lie to us and tell us what a rotten sinner we are. Now, we're all sinners. Could always say that we're all rotten sinners to one degree. But the thing is, we got to remember we don't go upon our feelings or certainly don't go upon those things that the enemy throws at us, those lies and deceitfulnesses that he throws at us we want to trust the word of god what god has said and again jesus said i never leave you well john made a way to maintain that fellowship with him in first john it says jesus or, or, or john says that which we have seen and we heard declare unto you that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with his son jesus christ and these things we read into you what that your joy may be full we want to have that fullness of joy we want to be that have that connection with the lord and experience his presence and his love he's right there the word of god is clear on that and again sometimes things get in the way we sometimes can become too busy and and it's our priorities can be all messed up and you and i have all experienced that sometimes you know we're like doing all these things to please these this group of people or that group of people uh the boss the you know teachers the co-workers whatever and the reality is when it gets right down to it are we pleasing the lord the lord needs to be number one well he writes these things verse four first john chapter one verse four that your joy may be full he doesn't want anything to get in the way of that and then he goes on to say, this then is the message that we've heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Very important point. God is complete, total, brilliant, light, purity, holiness, the whole bit. And then he says, if we say, and this is a challenge for us, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. In other words, <clears throat> You know, you've sinned, you're blowing it, you're on the wrong trail, you know it deep down in your heart, but then you rationalize it or you blame other people and all those kinds of things. You say, well, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing good. I'm, I, you know, well, you may not be doing good. And, you, and of course your conscience senses that guiltiness. We say that we have fellowship in, in, with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. And then it says in verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ 
cleanses us. And that, that idea there in the original is continually cleanses us from all sin. So the point is we have to, when we realize, when the Holy Spirit's prompted us, and you know, you're on the wrong track. You're on the trail really of darkness. You need to come back into the light. You need to come back in fellowship with the Lord. And of course, he's always there for us. Understand it. Satan will lie to us many times at this point. Say, no, no, you've gone too far this time. Uh, no, you haven't. Just come back to the Lord humbly with brokenness. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. And, and he goes in to talk about that. It says in verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we can't, again, rationalize it. We can't say that we don't have sin because that's one of the, the twists that Satan wants to throw at us. Well, you've sinned and you can't go back. And just, you know what the thing is? What's it say the very next verse? If we confess our sins, <laughs> he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness see that now at the cross of calvary jesus paid for all of our sins past present and future you see however our conscience is very which is that that uh god-given device within us within our, our heart and mind that tells us that uh something's wrong and and particularly something's wrong in our life and so we need to make a change we need to repent that's what repentance is it means oh i'm off track holy spirit's making that evident to me i'm not going to rationalize <laughs> i'm not going to blame others i'm just going to simply come to the lord and say lord i did a boo-boo i did an ouch i got off track i sinned i hurt somebody i hurt you lord forgive me and that's what it says in verse 9 beautiful verse thank you jesus for that being there if we confess our sins and the word confess there means hama alego what does that mean hama alego means homo it means same thing saying the same thing as god or his word lego word i'm saying the same thing as god i'm not rationalizing my sin blaming others but i'm saying yes lord i blew it i'm sorry so if we confess our sins, notice this, he is faithful in the great, the faithfulness of God. He's always there, never fails us. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means it's, you know, it was done at the cross of Calvary. We're bringing our conscience before the Lord at this point with broken repentance and confession and saying lord yes i was wrong we do that and, and god loves the humble he you know when we humble ourselves before the lord he's the one that lifts us lifts us up it's such a beautiful place to be it doesn't go along with the culture right especially american culture of pride and you know i don't do wrong and we just keep pressing forward no, and we do keep pressing forward, don't get me wrong. However, we make sure that we keep our laundry clean, so to speak, which is our heart, our conscience. You know, the, the story where Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, and of course he was going to lay for them uh, uh, an illustration for them to do to one another. Of course, the idea of love, but understand, notice his love for us. Peter didn't want him to wash his feet. And he says, well, Peter, if, you, if I can't wash your feet, then you have no part with me. And of course, Peter goes the other extreme. Well, give me a bath. Well, you don't, you don't need to be, you know, the word has already cleansed you. What you need is for me to wash your feet. And that's our, our Lord. He wants to. And how does he do that? Well, we do that in, in that intimate relationship when we know that we're off track just come to him and say lord forgive me lord cleanse me and it, and it says that first john 1 9 if we confess not rationalize not excuse not blame others but take the buck stops here i'm sorry lord it was my mistake he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness isn't that amazing it's like wash 
appears like like the, the driven snow once again. It's beautiful. Doesn't mean we're getting saved again. We're already saved if we're a Christian, if we've already received Christ as our Lord and Savior. But the point is, as we walk around the trails of life, our feet get dirty, and we need our Lord Jesus to wash our feet, wash our hearts, cleanse our minds, cleanse our conscience. And He is the only one that can do it. And we re we're re restored once again to that wonderful, beautiful fellowship with Him. He's so good. Jesus is so good. He's so faithful. He loves you so much. We just need to be real and honest and authentic with him, humble and broken. And that's what repentance is. You're on your own track. Come back to the trail that the Lord has before you because there's nothing like that trail. Amen. Well, God bless you as you worship and and serve him. One more verse, verse 10 says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. In other words, then we're denying the word of the truth of the word. And that's that's really where, where that what that verse says. And so there's chapter one, uh, first John, how to maintain that fellowship with him, maintain fellowship with Jesus. Nothing else matters in comparison to that. And when you, as the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, in fellowship and transparency with the Lord. He's going to add everything to your life. See, when you get your priorities messed up, <laughs> get back to the priorities. Who? What's number one? Jesus. And then family, then career, friends, all those other things. But keep your priorities straight. Keep your heart and conscience clean before the Lord in godly repentance. God bless you as you serve Jesus today.